Andrew Pierce. Andy. I'm Karen Reed, reservations coordinator. Nick told me about the problem with your room. Yeah, there's only supposed to be three to a room. Oh, you're right. That's the way it was reserved. We seem to be having a problem with our computer. It's booked four in every room. Yeah, it wouldn't be so bad if the fourth one was a student, but it's Mr. Balaban, our uh, school chaperone. <laughs> I see your problem. I'll get to work on this right away and get back to you. Um, uh... Karen. Karen, do they ever let you off work? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe we'll uh, see you around. All right. You know, we have racks for those over there. I was just headed in that direction. So, uh, been selling any raffle tickets lately? Well, no, not at the moment. We heard there was some idiot up here causing a big commotion. Uh, you wouldn't by any chance know who caused all of this, would you? I'm the idiot. Yeah, I guess I'm not much of a skier. I did okay on the slopes. It was the table slalom that gave me some problems. Well, don't feel too bad. I've lived here for two years, and I still don't ski. Really? That's great. You're the first person in this town I've ever heard say that. Sometimes I feel like the idiot. Everything here is skiing. <laughs> I guess I'm just better with numbers than that stuff. <laughs> me too. I'm nuts about numbers. I can look at a menu, total everything up, including the tax, in less than 30 seconds. That I would have to see to believe. Dinner tonight, 8 o'clock. I'll meet you in the lobby. Your friends don't talk much, do they? They, uh... They're just tired from skiing. That's another reason I don't ski. I like to save my energy for other things. <laughs> Bronchial condition. Happens whenever he gets horny. <clears throat> yeah, I think I better take him out for some fresh air at the club. It was really a pleasure meeting you. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> See, it gets very bad at high altitudes. If I don't feed him a virgin at least once an hour, he goes into convulsions. <laughs> Bye now. Sorry about that. Sorry I'm late. That's okay, but I can't stay. Mr. Tolson wants to see me in his office. Some kind of problem? I don't know. But he didn't sound real happy. Maybe he wants to give you a raise. <laughs> Not in a million years. I better go. I'll uh, see you in a little bit. Okay. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't come back and find you. I, I just went on a walk. Some meeting, huh? Yeah, some meeting. I got fired. How come? I don't know. I tried to talk to Tolson this morning about the overbooking problem and some billing errors I ran into. And the next thing I know, I get fired. It doesn't make any sense. Why don't we go sit down and just talk this whole thing over from the beginning? That's really nice of you, thanks. I could use a friend right now. <laughs> At first, I thought it was a mistake with the computer or something. But when I asked Mr. Tolson about it, he told me to mind my own business. But then my friend Kate told me he does this at every high school tournament. He booked the rooms to the rafters on purpose. Oh, and once he gets us stuck up here, he thinks he can... He jacks up the prices on everything he controls. What a creep! I'm outraged. Hey, this has been going on for three years. Well, what are we going to do about it? We're not going to take it is what we're going to do about it. Where is this Tolson guy? I think he's in the lobby. Let's go! You're not gonna get away with this, Mr. Tolson. Excuse me? Uh, what was that, son? Price gouging. Ripping the kids off. Ripping the kids off? Me? Karen, you know, I'm really surprised that you're really surprised. 
I never would have expected you to pull off one of these disgruntled ex-employee routines. Yeah, sure, you can fire her, but you can't fire us. We're the customers. And now, what is all this price-changing business? Oh, now, wait a minute. Let me explain that to you. Every year when you young people come here, Things are broken, things are stolen, and a lot of you take off without paying your bill. Uh, wait, I feel the same way as you do. It's a darn shame that all of you have to suffer just because of the actions of a few rotten apples. Mr. Tolson, I found out that this overpricing has been going on since the first tournament three years ago. Cameron, why don't you... Hey, you can't rip off the customers. This is America. You know, Land of the Free and Home of Ralph Nader. We're not going to take it, Mr. Tolson. Well, as your friend here just said... Hey, pal. The name is Al Sanders. Oh, thank you. As your friend here, Al Sanders, just said, this is America. And I can charge you anything I damn well please. Yeah, but in this case, we're talking about consumer fraud. Oh, she's right. Yeah. Well, consumer what? False and misleading advertising, breaking an implied contract. Like when a room is booked at a certain price for a certain occupancy. All right. All right. So what are you going to do? Twist my arm. <laughs> Ever heard of the Better Business Bureau? How about the Department of Justice? How about my cousin, Mo? How about a petition? Or a class action suit brought about by all the high school kids he's ripped off in the last three years? Good idea. All right. Yeah, we could do that to you. Wait a minute. Knock it off, all of you. And take my advice. Before you decide to do anything, you had better think twice. Because I don't put up with this foolishness. Especially from a bunch of teenage hooligans like you. Now, excuse me, please. Hooligans? What, what are you calling? Who are you calling a hooligan, man? Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the guy's a creep. He's a jerk. Well, maybe, but there's no point in starting something. Look, we're not going to get anything accomplished tonight. Andy's right. Hey, why don't we at least try to enjoy what little vacation we've got left? Yeah. Karen and I are going to go to the club. You guys, do what you want. Well, come with us, Barney. Okay. You guys? No, nah, I think we'll just head back to the room. Okay. See you in the morning. Yeah, have fun. Yeah. Bye. 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 All right. Bye. Bye. Dan and Al, Dan and Al were talking, and they said the sheriff was in on it. What? Last night, the sheriff and Tulsa were talking, and they said the sheriff knew about the whole thing with Balaban, the hooker, everything. The sheriff? If I don't miss my guess, this whole raffle drawing has been fixed. I wouldn't put that past Tolson. Well, with any luck, we've got just enough time to unfix it, but I'm gonna need your help. The guy fired me, remember? Come on! You okay, Dan? Oh, I think I racked up my knee. He's not gonna be able to race in the finals. You gotta get to the finish line and create a diversion. Dan, when you get up to the starting line, stall as long as possible. If the men's finals start on time, it's not going to give Karen and I the time that we need. Well, kid, wh what's going on? I got a plan, a wild-ass idea on how to get back at Tulsa. And if I'm right, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Great, what's the plan? It looks like the sheriff and Tulsa have this raffle rigged. And I think I know the winning number. But there's not a lot of time because the girls' finals are starting any minute. Oh, wait a minute. If I tell the officials I can't ski, they might cancel the race. Hey, man, do anything you can. Stall as long as possible. We need time, okay? All right, well, I'm on my way up to the finish line. All right, we'll see, see you later. Up there.